She decided to become her own boss by starting her own company, HBM Talent and Management, where she could personally and professionally mentor and represent talent. And um, I did, and what was really important and vital is developing a business plan, de developing a profit and loss that makes sense. Before okay. you sign anything, you better make sure that you have a lawyer or you have a representative looking at it and it makes sense or else you are actually throwing your career away. You have 30 seconds to answer five questions. If you answer these five questions correctly, you win 1,000. We are back. This is Best in Business. This is Manny Lopez, Mr. Too Blessed to be Stressed. And we have an exciting interview right now I want to introduce you to. Her name is Sophie Felix. Let me read off her bio. She sent me a bio that's like 48 pages long, <laughs> but I'm going to read what I can here in the interest of time. I'm just kidding. She's got it. It's not that bad. A couple paragraphs. All right. So Sophie Felix has 15 years experience in the entertainment industry. She started her career in modeling and later pursued her passion in talent management. She realized many talented women were being taken advantage of simply due to their lack of knowledge in the business. She decided to become her own boss by starting her own company, HBM Talent and Management, where she could personally and professionally mentor and represent talent. This is her quote. It was important for me to create a reputation and company which has respect and credibility. I also want my talent to feel confident and safe. She specializes in management, marketing, PR, booking, and special events. With her combined entrepreneur skills, alpha female mindset, and ambition, she is a key figure to the success of HBM Talent and Management. She received her education in business development by the National Latina Business Women's Association in San Diego. In 2013, Sophie was chosen to participate in their prestigious, prestigious ELEF Emerging Latina Entrepreneur Fellowship Program, which she successfully graduated. The program was sponsored by the Latinas and Business Foundation and Southwestern College, where she was given the gift of education. She learned how to develop business plans, marketing, obtain capital, laws, investment, and more. Immediately after graduation, she developed HBM Talent and Management and opened her first office. She enjoys and continues to mentor other entrepreneurs in pursuing their own dreams of business ownership. Sophie Felix is in San Diego chapter president of America's Children of Fallen Heroes Charity, a nonprofit which supports the children of fallen military heroes, police officers, and firefighters. In 2015, she was awarded a Telly Award for her charity commercial produced by award-winning videographer Joseph Cinemato, who has worked for Disney, Dancing with the Stars, and produced for Good Morning America. Dang, this girl is all that match. Y'all check this out. <laughs> it was important for me to make my commercial special to honor our troops and fallen heroes. When I called Joseph and asked him to support my goal, he immediately got on board as director. It was a very proud moment for me when we received our Telly Award. She also been accredited for volunteering her skills to support many children in need, including baby Isaiah Wallace, who is featured on the Dr. Phil Show. She often describes, describes how Isaiah and her charity work changed her life by giving her the motivation to create the life she dreamed of. Sophie Felix was also named a 2017 nominee for Inspirational Women of the Year by the National Latina Business Women's Association. NOBWA-LA supports Latino business women with education and resources. She was honored by the organization at the prestigious Women of Excellence Awards for her entrepreneur achievements and community work in Los Angeles area. Along with the other nominees, she is proud to be an inspiration and mentor two other Latinas by excelling at using her business skills to help others. We're almost done here, guys. We're almost done. <laughs> Sophie Felix currently manages HBM Talent Management offices in San Diego and North Hollywood. She was responsible for talent management, brand representation, and creating opportunities for her talent and clients to succeed and flourish. She is very passionate about further pursuing her goals by creating even more opportunities through HBM. I have full faith that I can achieve anything I put my mind to. I feel my purpose is to help others realize they can also create the life they dream of. It truly feels amazing when I see our talent and clients become successful. If they have a gift, whether it's modeling, acting, or singing, I want them to embrace it. I know God put me in this position to change lives, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Boom, drop the mic. Do we even need to do any interview? I think we're good. <laughs> She's good, right? Everybody knows now. Wow, we got a lot of people tuning in right now. That's awesome. Hey, guys. How are All you? Right. So, Sophie, now that we know everything about you. No. All right. So <laughs> before all of this, okay, before everything I'm, out, I'm, at, I'm talking about, who is Sophie? My name's Sophie Felix. I'm an alpha female entrepreneur. My dream is to 
use my skills to transform other people's lives. That's what makes me happy. Yeah. I'm very spiritual as well. Um, that's. I love working with Jesus on certain projects. Um, he's very special to me. Hashtag real men and real women love Jesus. True. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's been an ama amazing adventure. Uh -huh. I love what I do. Um, I'm very ambitious. I'm very successful, but it's been years of hard work to get where I am now. So I'm kind of in savage mode right now still. And I love it. Savage mode. Awesome. That's awesome to hear. So w when you started your talent agency, what year was that again? That was 2013? 2014. 2014. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, so, I didn't really, really start making it a full-time commitment until about a year and a half ago. Okay. Well, what changed? Um, I had more opportunities at that time. Um, one of the companies that I did help develop called RX County Care got funded. So I was put in a position to where I was able to quit my job and my nine to five and just help them develop that company. Um, and my business partner, who's the founder of that company, helped. We had a, a talk and I had him become CEO of my talent management company because we were good friends. We've been working together for a long time. Yeah. So when you get an opportunity like that, I embraced it and it was scary, but I went for it. Nice. So that's what, how I got my opportunity. And it's just been a, a really, really fun adventure. So you've been in modeling and, and kind of the entertainment industry for some time. When you say you started your company because of the women being taken advantage of in the industry, what did you mean by that? There's a lot of women that are beautiful, that are young, but behind the scenes, it's a very hard industry. Everyone that's really in it knows that. It's hard to be successful. Um, I've think seen that? a lot of stuff because a lot of people in Hollywood are actors. So it's hard to know who's real, you know, people change, and it's hard to find people that are true to you. So, especially men. Yeah. So, um, back when I started modeling, I saw a lot of stuff. Nothing happened to me, but I saw a lot of women just being taken advantage when it came to money, when it came to management. So, as I grew older, I decided I don't want to be a model. I want to be a businesswoman behind that. I want to have my own models. Yeah. So that's how that developed and it's working very well. I noticed that um, a lot of females embrace me and feel safe with me, but what's kind of cool is I have a lot of male clients as well. Nice. Um, most of my clients right now are, are actually males. Interesting. Well, that's a pretty good, pretty good insight. All right. So while we're doing this, because we do have our contest now, I know it looks a little cheap, I usually have my glass thing here, but I didn't have it, so sorry I'm going ghetto today. But <laughs> it's $1,000. You guys are going to win $1,000 regardless, all right? So we're going to pick a winner right now, and you have till the end of the show. It's like 15 minutes you have to be able to reach out to me. I'm going to give you the phone number to call, and or you can inbox me your phone number, and I'll call you. But we're going to pick a winner right now. Actually, we'll let Sophie pick the winner. I just need one. Just one. One little piece of paper. All right. Nick Rubin. Nick, Nick Rubin. All right, my friend. You got to reach out to me. Inbox me. Reach Nick out within Rubin. the next 15 minutes, and you have a chance at $1,000. Your shot coming up. All right, let's get back in. So, Sophie, are you telling us about the advantages being taken of in the industry, you know, the trust factor of not having real people to trust in that sense, in that industry at all. What... You know, so you got into starting your own brand. When mm -hmm. doing that, what would you say is kind of the, some of the challenges you faced starting that, kind of building your brand out? Honestly, financing. Financing, okay. Yeah, because when I started, it was all on my own money. So I had to really be careful on what I spent on certain things, and um, I did. And what was really important and vital is developing a business plan, de developing a profit and loss that makes sense. Okay. Um, what I notice with a lot of entrepreneurs is when they start their companies, they go all out and they, they spend some money on things they think would be cool, but it's not really important at that time. Sure. So with me, I wanted to do it my own way because it's, I want it, it's my money. I want the profits to go back in my bank. So I waited a little longer to do certain things, but um, however, it turned out perfect for me. What would you say is one of the, the worst decisions you made trying to get I mean, every entrepreneur, especially when we start out, we make mistakes, right? Okay. I've made tons of mistakes. I mean, I ended up homeless twice after starting my company. So it's definitely something that um, is very used to in my life, I guess. It's very common. So what would you say is one of the worst mistakes that you made in entrepreneurship that you would say, don't do this? I would say be very careful on who you help. 
because some people, I'm a very nice person, so people get drawn to me, but there's been a few people here and there where I'm like, you know what, looking back now, I shouldn't have spent so much time helping that person, mm -hmm. you know? But then there's some where it's like, oh, I'm so glad I helped that person because it just comes back to me. But um, I feel on also being embracing fear. Fear's embracing a, fear is a, a thing that is gonna come up and um, you gotta learn how to embrace it. Another thing I wish I would've worked on is developing a better health and fitness plan from the beginning, uh -huh. because as an entrepreneur, you will notice after certain months, if you do not take care of your mental health, spiritual health, physical health, you will burn out. So I wish someone told me back when I first started, hey, slow down, make sure you eat better. Yeah. Now I put Sophie first. Put Sophie first, there you go. Um, what would you say is one of the best decisions you've made in your business? Best decision was when I quit my nine to five job and I put full faith in Jesus and God, and I told him, lead the way. I'll, let me, I'll do the work, lead the way. And ever since then, everything just, I got in little signs of, and they lead the way for me and I just do the work. And not being fearful to talk about that and talk about my stories. And that's why a lot of people actually come to me because they wanna hear about those stories and see how I could help them with that. So. Um, I think that was the best decision I made was facing my fear, overcoming it, and just really, really putting full faith in this is my gift and I need to embrace it and I will. Awesome. What would you say is like the action steps that people need um, to get in your industry? So you've created a brand, it's successful, you've got clientele, you've got a brand that's in the industry, you've got name recognition, you've got social proof. What would you say has been probably the, the go-to steps for you to make sure that that happened? Developing a business plan, getting allies. You don't have to throw it out their names or anything, but get allies in the industry that when it's time to make those phone calls, you know you could trust them and they're going to come through for you. Getting a financing, making sure if you get an investor that it makes sense that the interest rate, the interest rates aren't really high. It's like you're going to go to get a car. These investors, yeah, they might want to throw money your way, but is it really worth it for you? They might want a high interest rate. Go to the top um, video videographers, photographers, movie directors. You don't want to have basic stuff. Yeah. Get really good stuff. Get really good headshots. Really good, really good um, stuff to work with. That's the first thing I look at when someone sends me music or photos, or I look at them and I, I could tell right away. Okay, so this branding. person, yeah, so branding is the most important, but it's really, really having faith in yourself. Clients that don't have faith in themselves, I'm not going to work with you, sorry. You right. have to have faith, faith in yourselves, you have branding. to bring it, and I want to see someone that really just works really hard and does not stop till they get what they want. Nice. So that would say, you know, for I guess people that are listening in, that maybe are trying to get into the entertainment industry, the first thing you need is branding. You need to have... Uh, a great look online that makes people want to see you, want to watch you, want to be connected with you. Because obviously, you need to be able to connect with other people in your industry if you want to be successful. You need to have a, a brand. And the thing is, also, good management, good representative. Because if you're really serious about your profession, you're not the one booking yourself, doing the rates. Like when, That's what your representative's supposed to do. So. Yeah. That makes a huge difference if you have a professional representative that's taking care of your brand, looking over these contracts with you. You know, that's when, when contracts come up, that's the main thing. A lot of people sign stuff and they get stuck with people that it's useless for years. I've seen that too. Wow. So before you sign anything, you better make sure that you have a lawyer or you have a representative looking at it and it makes sense or else you are actually throwing your career away. What would you say is like, like a good deal in the industry. Like if you're a music, you're in music, because I have a lot of people that, are, that do music that follow me, what would you say is... Um, Things like, are different now. Before, when we were younger, it was like, oh, get a record deal, you know, go sign with the top. Yeah. But they pretty much have control of your in, everything. Mm -hmm. And you don't make that much money once the numbers are distributed. Um, but... What I love, what I would recommend is to be yourself and to make sure that you're in a position, whether it's you have to find someone yourself or put up your own money to where you control your career and your music is what you want it to be, not what, what other people are just going to use you for. 
makes sense. So definitely, in a sense, her, her advice is just really be unique. Be yourself. You don't have to conform to what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. Now, your nine to five job, what made you decide that, you know, living somebody else's dream was just not going to be your path? I was literally just making someone else rich. And I thought about it, and no one's going to hand me my dream. No one's going to just call me one day, here, Sophie, you know. So I thought about it. Um, I prayed about it. I meditated about it, and it was the right thing to do for me. It's not the right thing for everybody, True. but for me it was the right thing. And if I didn't take those steps at that moment, um, all the people that are now in my life, all my clients and friends that I do support, when you're in this type of position, people's careers depend on what you think. Yeah. and your decisions and I love that I love being that woman so um, I want that's what I wanted so it was time for me to face my fear it was fear that was holding me back now you had mentioned a couple times you're an alpha female yes I am why do you have to why do you feel that you have to label yourself that way because of that's who I am and I I'm proud of it um, you know being a Latina entrepreneur especially I take great great pride in that um, I was born in a family that didn't really go to college, you know, traditional. So, so to be the first woman in my family to really make it out in L.A., to really take over in San Diego, mm -hmm. I am an alpha female because that's what I aspire to be. Yeah. So what, growing up, how would you describe your life? How was mom and dad? What, what was that like? Um, single mom. My mom took care of three of us. I was the oldest. We moved a lot. Um, when I turned 18, I, I left and I went to Job Corps. And I lived there for about a year, went to school, got my education and um, office skills. And then immediately after that, when I turned 18, 19, I graduated and I got a job with the Department of Defense. And I was there for about four years. I made warships and I was in charge of that. And that's where I really learned about business as well because the CEO um, was like a mentor to me and like, like a father. So. When it came to the Department of Defense and contracts, I learned everything from A to Z. So that really put me in a higher position as far as business. Um, and then getting my scholarship from the National Latina Business Women Association was when my life changed as far as learning how to start my own business. Nice. So you actually went the college route, um, but how far did you get into college? Um, you know what, I never really went to college. That program was a special program oh, that they okay. actually like brought them to us. Oh, so when I got for the ELEF program, we had they brought in lawyers, um, scholars, mentors, and at the time the president of the organization was my mentor. Her name is Remy Mims. So um, also Linda Van Kessler and Charles Van Kessler from Passion for Kids Charity were my mentors at the time, and they're just amazing. So um, I had about four or five mentors drilling me that year. Everything they knew. They just wow. believed in me so much. And that literally changed my life. The most important thing as an entrepreneur is finding and pursuing the best mentors and really, really investing your time in, into them and getting them to mentor you. Big time. I, I would say that's probably one of the biggest keys to success is mentorship. I mean, my, my life did not change. I didn't even think about entrepreneurship until I stumbled on a mentor. Right? I actually was working a nine to five job myself uh, for two years trying to build my way up into this company, growing, you know, climbing the corporate ladder, and just seeing opportunity after opportunity pass me by because of being young or you know, being a good salesperson and they don't want to give me a chance as a, a, uh, as a manager or whatever the, the excuse is. Um, I came across a guy who had basically took me under his wing and became a mentor before I even knew what the word mentor was. Wow. And, um, and that literally got me to just stop building someone else's dream, to mm -hmm. get the mindset that I could be just as big as the guy that's riding, that's got four different Lamborghinis, he's got a Dodge Viper and all these different cards that he's coming to work in. And I'm thinking like the best I could do is be a manager at his company. And this guy's like, this, you could be past that. You could be where he's at and then some. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I had that mentorship, that guidance from somebody that has walked a life similar to mine and is now seeing the value that, um, that I could bring to the world and nurtures that and gets that out of me. And that is, I think, a big key. And um, it's a lot of what I do in my life today because of my businesses focus on mentorship to orphans and kids in foster care because that's probably, I think, the biggest lack of, oh, of mentorship. I is. actually work closely in San Diego with um, social services and with children that were abused or abandoned and are in the system. 
So I was trained in suicide prevention and, you know, um, I visit them all the time, but those are the, the kids that really need help, Big that time. really deserve it. Um, I wish there are more, more organizations that would um, support them and I know a lot of them, so um, I really, really support them too. Definitely. I mean, you, you guys will see a lot of the stuff coming out very soon. I mean, the stats on, on orphans and kids in foster care is just crazy. I mean, if you look at prison population, just for example, 70% mm -hmm. of the prison population has gone through the system. Mm -hmm. They've gone through foster care. 80% of men on death row have been through the foster care system. Yeah. Women, you know, girls are four times likely to be abused because they go through that system. And it's just, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. crazy. Mm -hmm the lack of resources that is really there. I mean, it's literally just a bunch of nonprofits is, and, and things trying to come together to really bring awareness to these problems. And it's right in our backyard. I mean, just one company alone, Olive Crest, is a company I'm gonna be working with very soon. And they have just in Orange County alone, Orange County, California, they're managing 10,000 orphans. Wow, that's 10, amazing. 000. That's not San Bernardino County, that's not that's not LA County, that's not San Diego County, that's just Orange County. One small segment of California, 10,000 orphans. I didn't know that. There's a millions worldwide. Um, and this, this concept of just bringing resources, education, and mentorship, those three things to these kids is gonna what's changed the world. Absolutely. Big time. So how can people find you? They can find me by looking at my website. It's hbmtalent.com. And you could find me directly there, contact me directly there. Um, you could also look up hbmtalent.com to look up our new projects. I got the best um, male fitness and underwear model, Philip Busco from New York on the roster. He just came out to LA and killed some photo shoots. So we have some photo shoot projects coming up with him. I got Suge Knight Jr. on the team now. Um, I met Ricky, he's the first transgender right now to OKE Rec Entertainment that we're working with. So we got a lot of music coming up soon. That I'm not, Interesting. I'm gonna be coming out with that people will definitely be hearing soon. So heads up guys. Heads up, heads up, <laughs> seven up. Remember that game? Oh my gosh, <laughs> flashback, that just happened. But I, I really wanna give a shout out to you, Manny, and thank you so much for bringing us out and for all the information that you are giving everyone. It's so vital for entrepreneurs like myself and for all of us to really, really support each other and to really come together and make things happen this way. Big time. I mean, this is best in business for a reason. I bring in the best people I can find that know business. They understand the value of serving, right? Understanding how they can bring their value to the world in a unique way that doesn't just copycat everything else and wants to solve a problem. She found a problem. She found a problem in the industry of women being taken advantage of, not having the right representation, not having the right people to trust, and she's solving that problem. So I really want to thank you for coming down. I mean, she drove all the way from San Diego. Um, <laughs> if you understand traffic from San Diego to LA between seven and 10 in the morning, yeah, 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 you, you respect that. Um, we actually have just a couple more minutes on my show and unfortunately Ruben has not uh, reached out. So I don't know how, what we're gonna do here. Come because, on, Ruben. Yeah, Ruben, it's your chance at a thousand bucks, my friend. <laughs> I tagged you and everything. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we're not going to be able to do that then, so I don't know how that's going to work. Um, let me see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Sophie pick one more person because I'm not going to let No, we're going to get a winner here. today. Today. We need a winner. All right. Well, she grabbed two. I just need one. Just take one. All right. This is the winner right here. Mark Reddick. Mark. Mark Reddick. Mark, Mark, Mark. I know you're watching, Mark. Where are you at? Where are you at? Inbox me, Mark. I'm going to tag you. Mark. Yay, Mark. Reddick, inbox me now. I want to know what Mark's going to do with minute chance. <laughs> with his oh. prize. Huh? It's true. Yeah, you got like one minute. Come on, Mark. If we don't do this, we're going to have to carry it over for next, for next, uh, I, he's online right now. I can see him. I see you, Mark. I Mark, see it inbox says I'm me here. Your phone number. You have like 30 seconds, my friend. Woo. Uh, all right. I don't know what you guys. Look, everyone, everyone, like, go Mark, go Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. There you are. Inbox me, Mark. I need your cell phone number. Call me. Text me. Let's go. There he is. Phone number. Yay. All right. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We got a chance. We got a chance. Oh, he's got to answer five questions. Oh, okay. All right. He's giving me his number right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got it. 
All right. Uh, Come on, uh, Mark. You got to get these questions. All right, let's bring him in. It's a 209, I think. First, 602 is the first, first, first three numbers. All right, all right. We're going to do this, guys. We're going to do this. Woo! I don't even know my five questions yet. Let me see. <laughs> okay, so. All right. I have an idea. Oh, 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 it's ringing. Will he answer? Hello, Manny. Mark! What's up, my friend? How you doing? Good. How you doing? Aw, oh, man. Too blessed to be stressed. You know me. Mark! What's up, my friend? How you doing? I gotta turn down the uh, audio. We've, we've got a huge delay between we've the got phone an echo. and the phone here. Yeah, it's just in case you cuss. That way I can block you on. <laughs> I'm just messing. Okay. But yeah, we do have a delay because we have to do editing in real time, really fast. So, Mark, you got 30 no seconds problem. to answer five questions. Are you ready? Mark? Yes. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Oh, put the volume down on the show. Turn it all the way down. Just hear me on the radio. Okay. All right, you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, I need you to turn down that audio. I can still hear it. It's not down. It's, I have no sound on my side at all. Interesting. Okay. All right, well, we're going to play. All right, you ready? We're going to start this. Yes, I am. Get some, uh, some music so we can cue it in here. <laughs> all right, so we're going to start in 10 seconds. You have 30 seconds to answer five questions. If you answer these five questions correctly, you win $1,000. Are you ready? Awesome. Let's I'm getting, go. Him, I'm getting him so nervous. All right. So we're going to get started in three, two, one. Mark, what is the name of my show? It's the Manny Lopez Hour. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I stumbled in today. I have no clue. I've just been watching you. Oh, you lose on the first question. Okay. Well, we're going to skip that know, one because you didn't have, have a chance. I no clue. I just stumbled and watched it. I just appreciate you and what you do and, and everything else. And, uh, hey, thanks a lot, man. I, I appreciate you coming on, Mark. Well, next time, watch the show, my friend. You're going to have a chance to win $1,000. This is my first day. I just saw it. It was awesome, and I'll be tuning in for the future. Awesome. Well, it's going to carry over till next week, so we'll see you next week, and hopefully you'll win or at least get a chance to win as well, my friend. <laughs> this is it for Best in Business. Uh, thank you for your time, Mark. I appreciate it. We're good to go there. Um, all right, guys. So as you can uh, tune in, we did not win a winner again. We are 0 for 2. 0 for 2 so far, guys. <laughs> Someone's going to win $1,000. Will it be you? Tune in next week. Best in business. This is RadioLatinoInc.com, where you guys can listen into the high-quality audio. And uh, tune in on Facebook to watch our awesome-looking faces. So we'll see you guys next week. I appreciate all the guests that came on. We have two guests that we didn't even get to highlight. Oh, my gosh, I'm so bad. All right, so you got to go on the Learn With Manny app, okay? We have Rob Frazier. He's a former Marine that paid off over $100,000 in debt. I did an exclusive interview with him in Las Vegas, sat down 18 minutes long. He's going to tell you step-by-step step how he paid off $100,000 in nine months. And the second interview, I'm going to do a trailer about it because it's really good. Um, it's a, with Greg Reed, it's a filmmaker, best-selling author. I sat down in his home in Carlsbad and we just went to town. About a 40-minute interview of just anything and everything of how he's created success. This guy's been featured in Forbes. He's been featured on all kinds of different places. Entrepreneur Magazine. He's spoken at the UN. Um, you're definitely going to want to listen to the interview. So go download the Learn With Manny app. We'll be back next week here live at the Equitable Building in Los Angeles. Thank you, Sophie, for coming Thank in. You. Thank you, Alex. For coming in as well. Woo! <laughs> Almost dropped that there. He's been all quiet in the background there. <laughs> all right. So we'll see you guys next week. And thanks for tuning in. You guys have a great day. And always remember that you are too blessed to be stressed. Have a good one. <laughs>